So welcome everyone okay. yep. to the Solid Experience series hosted this one by Solid Experts. And remember now, Solid Experience is the combined power of the Solid Experts team and the Mechanica Solutions team working over with the Anovia side with the full 3D experience on-premise platform. And of course us, who I know you know and love by now, which is the Solid Experts team working with the SolidWorks and the Cloud Solutions. Yes. Let's jump right in. So. Katie, we are navigating product changes with Anovia today. So I asked you, are you prepared for the platform? Are you ready? Yes, sir. That's why I've got my groovy jacket on and I've got my platform wedgies. Well, where's my camera? See, I am ready to talk about the platform. <laughs> I, as much fun as that platform is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not the 20 year cycle yet. We have a couple more years before that becomes popular again. Let's oh. look at the 3D experience platform. So, okay, yes, yes, this is good. And I'm really excited we're talking about this today. Um, I've got so many questions and ready to learn. So let's go. I'll get rid of this jacket. It's hot in here. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a reason they went out of style. We'll dive right in. So the 3D experience platform or 3D experience works is a combination of tools from Dassault Systems to design and simulate, manufacture, manage your data, visualize, and figure out information. And what you'll notice is that we're, we're talking about all the brands in Dassault. So we're not talking about a couple of small players here. We're talking about Simulia, Endelmia, Anovia, NetVibes. These are all powerhouses in their own individual industries. And now we're getting access to them. So basically, you can think about the platform not as some uh, outdated shoes, but instead- They're not outdated. <laughs> They're just uh, on retirement or on, on hold for a little bit. I think they're outdated. But that being said, you know what's not outdated is the platform. So That's right. As a, as a brief introduction, my name's Steven, and uh, I spend way too much time on the 3D experience platform. And with me today is Katie. Yes, and I am a 3D experience influencer. So I'm excited to share this with you and learn with you all today um because i am expressing my excitement to customers and this particular topic is one i get a lot of questions about so i will have lots of questions for you steven so excellent i'm excited and you know what a great place if you have Ooh. questions you can always put things in chat but on top of that yes. uh we do have our previous webinars so we've been talking about the platform for a while now so the fact that you haven't figured it out is is a little scary, Katie, but if you want to refresh <laughs> everything we've talked about, check out the our webinars page. We have the QR code there. You can scan it with your phone. I also posted the link in chat, so you can just jump onto that, no problem. Oh, that's cool. And you can check out all types of presentations, introduction, all the way to kind of more advanced topics inside of the platform. Excellent. Katie, Katie, did you write down the link? I think I think you might need it. I think you might need it for reference. I got it. Thank you. Freshy. <laughs> so today we're going to be diving in to a brief introduction of the cloud. If you aren't as familiar with the cloud, like Katie here, we're going to just kind of go through the basic concepts and, and why we're talking about it and, and why it's important for Anovia. Then we'll talk about releasing and revising content. So the ability to control your data and control your product inside of your company. And we'll wrap up with a QA. and a uh, we dive into a couple of the most common questions and then answer your questions. So please remember, post them in chat, post them in that questions dialogue and go to meeting. If you haven't figured out how to use a question chat box by the end of the pandemic, you, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't help you, I can't teach you. Yeah, I'll keep track of the questions too. So anytime. Excellent. And I'll interrupt so, you, I'll gladly interrupt you. Surprise. <laughs> no, but let's let's kick it off with how all this began. So. We're all pretty used to SolidWorks. That's our background. That's where we, you know, have really started our design career is inside of SolidWorks. And, and that includes the desktop application that you install and all the other amazing tools that come with it. So we have simulation and composer and electrical tools and TDM and tech publications. And there's a really long list. It goes on and on and on. But what we don't have is the ability to interact with the cloud, or at least we didn't until a couple of years ago where we expanded those applications to integrate with the cloud or the 3D experience platform. 
And this includes a ton of different applications and services and content that before we were missing out on. Yeah, you know, I think it's cool that we're calling them apps because um, that helps me wrap my head around, you know, the apps that I install on my phone. Because um, you think about simulation, composer, electrical, PDM, all as programs that are integrated with SolidWorks. But when you think about them as apps and to be able to put them on devices, it, it's very helpful in the conversation. So. And that's, and that's a perfect analogy is understanding these tools as if you had apps on your phone or a toolbox where you have your data, your cloud data, which is the single source of truth, and then you get to pick and choose what tools you want to use to it in order to develop your product. So it matches whatever you're working on and whatever you're doing, and you don't necessarily need the other tools floating around. So the way the platform is organized, we all have different roles in our companies, right? And these mm -hmm. roles are what define what we do, you know, what, what your jobs are, what your tasks are, and in fact, what applications you would have access to or need in order to do your day-to-day -day job. And the idea of the platform is to take all those different roles and to give you one centralized location, one piece of information where you, you're collaborating and you're working together. Right, right. So for what I do for at Solid Experts, I don't have SolidWorks on my computer, which I'd like to change, but <laughs> I don't need it where you have it on your computer. But we both have um, the platform so we can communicate with each other um, and other certain applications. So that's a, a great way to think about it. Exactly. So you only need certain tools and you don't necessarily need other tools. And the tool we're talking about today and, and the whole reason we've come together is Anovia. And when we talk about Anovia, some of you are probably familiar with Anovia, the on-premise solution, which exists for products like Katia. And that is uh, the product that actually Tesla uses. Mm -hmm. Fun time, if you ever want to test them up. But the, the product that Tesla uses in order to manage their data. But for what we're working on and within the 3D Experience Works portfolio, we have the ability to take Anovia and to actually use it on the cloud. Now, Katie, here's a question. Why is the cloud important? Why is the cloud important? Yeah. Um, because there's unlimited storage available in the cloud. Can you set a storage? Yeah, storage is a good good point. Easy access is a good point. Easy access, yeah. Great question. You know, there's there's a lot of things that push people to the cloud, right? Yeah. So let's let's take a look here on the typical on-premise solution that we we're pretty comfortable using, you know, SolidWorks PDM, for example, uh, or other on-premise software solutions. And in general, when you talk about a on-premise solution, you are just talking about the tip of the iceberg when you talk about the license cost. So that's only yep. about 9% of the product's cost is the license, but you have to customize it and implement it and have hardware and keep IT personnel and maintain your servers and train your new users. And there's a whole lot that you have to keep shelling out money to year after year to keep your on-premise installation going. Yeah, monitoring things. Yeah, geez, this is good. I like this slide. Yeah, and it's basically a permanent cost. So now you're you're stuck paying into the hardware and updating servers. And uh, when the server goes down, then you can't work. And there's this whole slew of issues that on-premise solutions have. And this is even just in general, not even specifically talking about Anovia or SolidWorks. All software on-premise solutions have these types of issues. When you talk about on-cloud, on cloud makes it so much easier to use because yes, there is a subscription fee, but the subscription fee is the majority of the cost. So that's the majority of the iceberg. So we have a little inverted iceberg, I guess, but you pay a little bit for extra customization and implementation, uh, implementation and training, but you don't have to keep your IT underwater. <laughs> Icebergs, that's, that's a pretty catastrophic joke. Um, kind of like the Titanic. Anyways, moving forward. <laughs> Uh, and, and you but, have the subscription fee and training. Yeah, and I can monitor that subscription. I can shut it off when I need it or, or you know, or shut it off when I don't need it. Um, I love that. I love the subscription for everything I do. Yeah. yeah one, of the, one of the primary pillars of cloud is the ability to expand and to shrink based on your <laughs> active needs, whereas that's not really a, a process that works on-premise. Right. 
All right, enough theoretical. Let's jump into the fun. So, Katie, we're going to be replacing you <clears throat> as being a manager. So you now have to you ha now have to put on your manager hat. You now have to think critically about the platform and think critically I'm so about my excited. design. I should right, not I let you be my boss again. This is this is a bad this is a bad idea. So this is gonna be fun. Okay, I'm ready. Let's dive into releasing content and revising content. Okay. We're introduced. We're ready with the cloud. But Katie, what is release? When you think about release, what do you think of? What do I think of? Um, yeah, just letting it go and getting excited about. Uh, you know, the release of a new idea. I love your picture. Yeah, so it, it's a great idea, the idea of releasing something, setting it free, and, and really allowing for that flexibility. Well, let's take a look at what that looks like in the work world or in the design world. So you have your data, and uh, you go ahead and release that. So let's just throw that dove up into the air. And, you know, production's <laughs> super happy. They catch the dove, and they say that that's great. Let's go ahead and make it. They make the product, and then the customer has it, right? Easy, perfect. Not not one problem, right? So this is this is how it works, right, Katie? This is what you expect. That's right. Wrong. So welcome to the real world, where we start working on the data. We run into a problem. We have to go back and revise it. We're working on the data again. Oops, that doesn't work either. We're back. Then we're going to go through. We almost make it to production, but there's a tiny thing off that they really hate. Goes back, goes forward, back to production. <laughs> we need it again. Go back to the first idea that you had that was much better. All right, now we have to move forward. We made it, we produced it. Yes, here, Mr. Customer. No, customer hates it. We're back, we're doing another revision. We're moving forward and finally we get there. So this is uh, the easiest version. I honestly think if this is the production cycle for something, you did a great job. But yeah, that's, right. what we're, that's, that's what we have to deal with because welcome to the real world, Neo. Unfortunately, it's not just two little release lines and everyone's hunky-dory and happy. So the reality yeah. is well, we need to be able to be flexible with our data, how we release that data. So the white lines here on how you release your data, the yellow circles, that's your revisions. So which version you're working on, make sure you're not accidentally using the wrong, uh, the wrong revision, the wrong data set, and then adjusting that change and managing that change as you move forward so that you, know, you can make a better product so that you can see why decisions were made in the past. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is how to make this much, much easier because we have the Anovia tool set. So let's dive right in, Katie. How is change tracked? How is change tracked? Um, yeah, well, with PDM, uh, we have workflows and uh, we put a project in a workflow and things get released and versions and revisions, A, B, and C. Exactly. Yeah. So this is kind of the, the workflow we're all pretty used to, where you start out with your part, you go through some work, you release the part, you get approvals, it goes through a workflow, boom, revision A. Then if anything needs to change, you start working, it goes to and release, it, it, you go through that process again, boom, revision B. And it works pretty well for PDM, but it doesn't have too much flexibility. You're, you're really limited, it's a very basic process. In Anovia, things work a little bit different. So the revisions themselves are identities. So that revision A, B, and C describes the state that your component is still uh, currently in. Whereas the maturity itself, so the in work or release, that's defining the maturity of your part. So you can have a revision A, and while you're in revision A, you'll be working on a part or you'll have it released, but you'll always know which stage of the process you're at. Well, it's like almost better than PDM. <laughs> it it really is because you have a lot of flexibility in how you approach your production. So in our case, yeah. pretty much every object has maturity. So it goes through, uh, if you talk about the design process, you start out with your little idea. It's all separate in your private little hole where you don't want anyone seeing it. All right. Then you move forward, you put it into work and you start working on it. Everyone loves it. Then you freeze it and release the product. And then finally, eventually, all good things must come to an end, including your part design. It goes obsolete. And this doesn't apply just to SolidWorks parts. It actually applies to pretty much every type of object. So PDFs and change actions and your folders and tasks, everything has a maturity. 
And being able to track and manipulate and work with that maturity inside of the platform is one of the most flexible pieces that simply doesn't exist inside of your conventional data management tool. All right. I know how much you hate talking about theoreticals, Katie. Let's dive right into an example. We're going to go. Yes, through the I'm, a, I'm a visual learner. If you can't yeah, tell. You can see it, you know, all this I'm random doing. talk, like let's, let's see some software. <laughs> let's see some SolidWorks. How does it work? So we'll talk about release okay. action. I'm going to go ahead and release the products to the world. Uh, we're going to go into the issue management. Then we'll activate a change action and go through that. So the idea of actually working through a change action and documenting the change. And then finally, uh, my manager, formerly known as Katie, is going to confirm the approval process. And so this is really an idea of what it looks like on the fly. Okay. So when we talk about a release action, my task is to take the work I've been doing and to put it from private to in work and then to put it from in work as I've been working on it. I want to push that forward to being frozen and then released. The idea being that I'm done with my work. I want to make sure that everything is good to go. I want to make sure that it gets approvals if we need it. In this case, uh, I'm my own approver. Uh, and then finally, we'll release that data so that Katie can see it and interact with it in the production phase. Now, yes, really so important to know. manager is like the, she's like the in charge of production. So I don't have to over, I'm not looking over your shoulder on every little thing that you do. You can approve your own work to send, is that, I just want to get my role. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So I, I get to approve my own stuff until it makes it to production. But then if there's any issues, which I would never uh, make that isn't perfect, uh, then we okay. come back and, and work with it from there. Okay, so I get it. I've, I've been working on this drone. And note that in this scenario, we've been working on developing this drone for quite some time. So everything's not at Rev A because unfortunately, in the wor real world, not everything is just always at Rev A. There are, in fact, other revisions. So we're working with some Rev E files, some Rev C files. You know, it could be really complicated if you're just trying to keep track of this inside of folders, but we don't have to do that. We get to simply enjoy the platform and the fact that I don't have to keep track of any of this. Let's kick it off by releasing these into a change action. So currently my maturity state, everything is in work and I wanna go ahead and create a new change action. So within SOLIDWORKS, I don't even have to leave my window because I'm nice and lazy and don't want to tab over. Uh, but within SOLIDWORKS, I have the ability to go in and create a new change action. And I, I could make it off of a template, but I'm going to start from scratch. And I'm going uh, to create something called release the drones. Release the drone. So exactly, release the Kraken. So the idea is I want to release the drone. I want to set the severity. Honestly, it's I'm going to be approving it. It's kind of a low low priority right now. No one's freaking out about my drone. I could set a due date if I wanted to. But the cool part about a change action is once I create it, it's really easy to kick it off. So within each change action, I have more details like the name of the change action. I have the owner, when it was started, uh, if there are any comments on it. Notice the title of release the drones, description, change action to release the drones. And in this case, I want to set up the members of the change action. And because for the release process in my company, I am both making the changes and I'm also approving the changes because I am judge and executioner in this case. So I'll go ahead and just give myself the powers of God. And now I want to propose some changes. So what am I actually changing when posterity looks back at this change action? What are they doing? And in my case, we're going to go ahead and add a couple changes. So the first change I want to make is I want to make sure that this drone, and I'll just go ahead and search up the drone here. So here I have my drone. Wow, that was go fun. Ahead And modify it. Yeah, it's really easy to find data on the cloud. Everything is searchable and indexed. I don't really harp on it too much because if you watched any of the previous videos, Katie, uh, <laughs> you would know that it's really easy to find data. And we've kind of shown that a couple times. What I really want to dive into is this, where now I can release this drone piece. I'm going to go ahead and add that. And let me add another piece. So yes, we all know that there's SOLIDWORKS files here. But what if I wanted to do like a PDF with the information about my drone? 
And lo and behold, in my beautiful little cloud Chrome window, I do have a drone specifications document that I need to make sure gets released with my drone. So let me go ahead and drag and drop that in. And we're just going to, uh, you know, make sure it releases with the drone. But it doesn't do is spell everything for you. If that comes out, I will. I'll be the first one to <laughs> type for you. Okay. So now the idea is is set. We we proposed two changes. We want to take the drone, and we want to take the drone PDF, and we want to update them. And if I wanted to, I can add referrals and contexts. So I could go in, and if there's like a cool picture, I was I want people to be able to see. I can drag and drop in the reference documents. Okay, make sure you keep an eye on this image. And now we're going to kick it off. So in the maturity, we've created everything. We've set up our change action. Let's go ahead and actually start doing the change. Let's let's put our mouth to the road here, or nose to the grindstone. I think that's actually what it's supposed to be. I forgot how that. So you works. have to you have to take it from draft to in work to get Megan manager to see it, right? Well, exactly. So I want to go from in work to released. So I want to go through the life cycle of the actual change action because now that this is a live change action i can activate oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. which is pretty much available wherever you're at and i can say i want to release i want to work under release the drones this is the piece of you know documentation that i want to work against or to to show that i'm working under now the okay. benefit here and what's really important to know is that there's no paper there's no like Accidental mistakes. I also have to remember to hit OK. So if you don't hit OK, that is a, a mistake you can make. So rather than cancel. But what's cool is that I kind of forgot inside of my change action that, yeah, I'm releasing the drone, but like there's a bunch of assemblies and other parts that need to get released with it. Well, that's totally OK. I went to change action and I'm going to go ahead and change the maturity of my part, of all the parts. And rather than being in private, we're going to go ahead or in work, we're going to ship them all to frozen. And what that's going to do is it's going to give the change action that information that part of this approval process is approving these individual parts being moved in maturity state. So notice everything goes to frozen. And if we even jump out of the change action and go back over into the change action app itself, we'll notice that now in the realized change sections, we have a ton of data. And this data shows me things like uh, when it was changed, if I had an assembly, it would show me what parts were replaced. And this is the pieces of information that are being tracked for posterity. So you don't have to guess of who updated it or who added more features. You know because right. it's there, it's part of the change action. And, and I have a question about frozen. Can I, let's say I'm like, uh, you know, somebody who wants to see the files, but I can't work on them when they're frozen, but I can still see them or are they completely exactly. just, I can't touch them at all. Well, so the idea is that frozen would be used to show someone the files you've been working on without giving them edit access. So for example, edit you don't really okay. edit files when they're frozen. Okay. Now, even if I wanted to release this change action right now, I can't, and you know why? because I made a mistake. Boom, object document drone specification C is not frozen. Well, shoot, I totally forgot I needed the drone specification. Thank goodness some dashing and cavalier individual added it to my change action. <laughs> what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and update my drone specification document. And there's a bunch of different ways I could do this. And, and if you want to see all the cool things we can do with documents, you should check out some of our previous webinars here. But what I can do is work underneath the life cycle of the drone. And you'll notice that the drone specification document as is currently in Rev C. We wanna work underneath the change action. Hey, look at that, the hard hat is everywhere. We have access to release the drones and I'm gonna set it to frozen. And that way I'm pushing that documentation along and saying, yes, we're actively deciding to do this the correct way we're actively deciding to push that information through our change action. And now I, if I refresh here, it goes up to 17 items and we have our change in maturity state 
when I go to push this forward, send it over to Katie, toss it over the wall, rather than sending a bunch of emails or, hey, Katie, I'm done. I'll go yeah. ahead and shift that over. And now the files themselves, if I jump back over into my session here, are all set in Frozen until they're approved. Now you see here, here's the fun part. I made myself a prover. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve this because I've checked all these already. I don't need to go in and look at the details or look at the reference documents. I mean, they're all here, which is nice, but I mean, I know I'm perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and run that release. Yes, you are, Steven, you're perfect. I've never made a mistake in my life. I'm definitely, you know, that it's, everything's perfect. Nothing's gonna change. So we'll go ahead and release that. And when we do that, the change action itself is going to release but it's also going to push the maturity, bada bing, bada boom, of all my components to be released. So back in my session here, all these products are released. I can go ahead and unreserve those. I won't be needing those anymore. They're ready for the world. And bada bing, bada boom, just like that, we are off to the races. You're sending so, a dove in the air. The dove is free. The dove has been released. and by doing those release actions, we've been able to control how the maturity of our products are updated while also having the transparency and tracking during the release process. So no matter who you are, or what you're up to, if you want to look at why something happened in the last couple of months, or you know, you find this file two years down the road, why did some crazy guy put it from C to D? You could go and see. You know, there's no mystery, there's no guesswork. It's all tracked and available. Yep. All right, well, I've been doing a lot of talk. For you, it's all set up for you. Like there's no, you just plug in the information and it's it's like the process is all there for you. I love it. Exactly, it's pretty intuitive and pretty easy to use, especially when, well, maybe I didn't do quite as good of a job as, as I was hoping here. So the idea is that Megan Manager is gonna go in and, and the reports on the floor, production is saying that maybe I should have worked a little bit harder to make sure a dimension wasn't quite off. So what she's going to do is she's going to create an issue and, and she's going to kick that over back to me to fix. So let's jump over to Megan Manager and, and Kitty, I'm giving you all the power now. So be aware. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> all right. So can you see my screen? Yep. You are live. Let me hide our way. There we go. I just see you now. Let me hide you. you. Just I see me? Well, hi. You can hide the webcams there. Yeah. You're going to be using two screens. Second. Well, Game that's changer. a good idea. Okay, so um, I am in my 3D experience platform uh, dashboard. And let's see. I would have gotten a notification, right, that there was a, that you had released something. So over, over in your data management, I've that's actually shared a bookmark with you that, that documents... Okay. Wow, uh, all of our different yeah, in my data management tab. Projects. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. And you can go close out of that on the right. You don't you don't need your notifications yet. Silly Katie. Or silly <laughs> Megan manager. Silly Megan manager. Uh okay. you know, of course it was hiding behind the go to meeting. <laughs> yeah. The go to yeah. webinar. So right. I go into my beautiful data management tab to see what projects are here. And I see the drone has been released. And so yeah, that's that's the one they were talking about on the floor. It needs to get fixed. Yeah, I'm they said there's something of... wrong with it. So let me look and see what's wrong with it. So I'm going to drag it over here to markups, right? Yep. Yep. Perfect. Add so you're going to add that object to it. This is so fun. Okay. And add this is all completely cloud based. Yeah, you should maximize that puppy so you can see it. I'm going to maximize this puppy so I can see it. So this is cool. I love. I hope we make this this solid experience uh, drone. I think it's very cool. Um, so I've got all these little tools down here: markup, annotations, view tools, um, markup, view. And this this is cool. If I want to like move it around a little bit, um, you know, zoom in. Yeah. It's a nice way of interrogating the model. Really getting to interrogating to the model yes so i can zoom in here and i can see the you know the guys were saying how uh 
there's a problem with the arms on the on the drone that they there's yeah interf- they package it with, or something like that. you know when they when they went to package it they realized that i i made the the legs too long so we we know from the field that this didn't quite work but you know how do we katie how would we document that or, or create a markup so that that information yes. is passed on to posterity my mistake is immortalized well there's this lovely tool called markup tool so oh, um, you uh, click the markup to create it. And this is just what pops up for default. So we'll just leave it there now. This is gonna, a markup on the drone. And I'm just gonna get it started and say, the arms are too long, too yeah. long for packaging. That's what the guys are telling me. Create markup, okay. So then I wanna, make a little note of what I'm talking about. Do I do I really want to do that? Do yeah, measure let's yeah, let's let's get shoot over a measurement, show show that dumb uh, designer that, you know, this this is the distance we're talking about. It doesn't work. So if you just, and it's you know, like somewhere like screen. around here. And uh I think I can pull it up here like this, right? Oh yeah. You, you I love make it, this you part. make it pop out more. Like let's what what tells someone this is not right? more than blue text. Oh my goodness, how about danger? <laughs> Make it red. No, now I feel bad. Okay, so just fix that yeah. and, you know, I That's can do any. Do, uh, what was that, uh, would I look in annotations here? Or no, it's still a yeah, markup. Inside, inside the markup, the drop down uh, underneath the circle. So you can add text, you could write an essay if you really wanted to. Oh, you I love this. Just yeah, free hand. this. Like, uh, bad. <laughs> oh good red arrows you know i don't feel bad enough about myself but uh here, here we are just <laughs> kick the man while he's down why don't you uh, okay well, and- i don't know if you could be any more clear so maybe we kick this off in a change action and let me let me have a chance to redeem myself <laughs> okay so um all right so we did that and is that was that all that i had to do um well you to- have to make the change action you've created a markup but over on the okay far so right- the markup so it's all there. So now I can go into the change action tab. Well, on the bottom bar of the markup, where where you were just having all that fun drawing and making fun of me, um, I would hit cancel on that one. On the far right okay. side, you can kick off a change oh, yeah. action directly change from it. Action, click. Okay, so it captured all that information. And exactly. so new change action. So this is where if I want to change the title, what do you think? Yeah. Should I say uh, drone arms? too long whatever okay i'm gonna make it a high priority oh so uh, no it. i'll have to move my golf event shoot <laughs> and i click save as draft right exactly so okay. now you are creating the change action as the manager downstream so anyone has the ability uh obviously if you set it up with your permissions to go ahead and kick off a, a change and say this we found this is wrong you know this didn't work out quite right and if you refresh that change action, tap it. Uh, refresh, refresh, refresh. Now we have the change action. Cool. Okay. Yes, so then I have to click into it, right, to assign it to you. Yeah, definitely. You wanna you wanna kick it off, and you probably wanna maximize it too, just so that we can see it. You're not see comparing it. Here. Don't get ahead of yourself. Spoilers. So owner is me, look at all this information, maturity draft. So I wanna you know, look at the information, the date, you know, that it's high, my little notes. Um, so those are the properties. And then when I go to members, I see myself, but I also wanna add you, right? So I'm sending Definitely. it back to I, you. I should be there, because you, you wanna assign it to me. You wanna Steven. make me do work. <laughs> Stephen Murphy, add. And then um, I you, also want to. You just make... found me that easy. Jeez, no work <laughs> at all. What is, what is this so, shenanigans? I also want to so make you case, right. And it's easier to make me a manage or to make me an improver uh, if you hit the cancel button. You can actually edit what he's doing. And then go here. So in okay. this case, we want to make sure that both the designer and the product manager approves this change. So both of us are going to be a set to approver so that in order to push forward, in order to make that final change, both I have to say, yes, I've approved that this is fixed, but then also make a manager can say, yeah, the issue I found or my team found has been adjusted. So you want to also make mega manager 
and approver as well. I do. Okay. Um, you know, I just realized this. I could also remove people. Like, you know, if we've got a change action going, and I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm taking you. I'm taking Stephen off the project. I can remove you. I didn't realize you could do that. So that's really. You cool. can just, uh, yeah, just remove me. Just uh, you can you can do the changes <laughs> yourself. That's perfect. Um, and then propose changes. It should all be right here, right? Or do I need to add something more? Yep, you should uh, you should be good to go on that. So basically, because you're in that document and you created it based on the markup, it's not only going to add that markup as a referential, but it also figured out what you wanted to do. So it automatically picked up that, hey, this file needs to be revisioned, and we could go in and change it if we wanted to. But in our case, that automation works very smoothly because we do want to okay. make it better. All right, so, so now you're ready to kick it off. Right, so now I'm ready to change the maturity from draft to in work. So you click here, set to in work. Perfect. This is so, I didn't think I could do this. Okay, and then I think that's it for me, right? That's, it. that's, that's all you get to do. Until you now, do the work. Let, let me do the work, all right, all right. I just got the notification. <laughs> I, I just got notified that I've been assigned to this crazy, crazy product project but uh you're like i let's... just released it come on exactly but what you were able to do there and and why that was so smooth is you're able to basically identify exactly what was wrong and use it to kick off the change action so it assigns uh you assign the change action it notifies the relevant team members it adds the information in there that i need to make the change and we're off to the races you know you don't it's not like emails and you're not waiting for someone to get back to you on all this. It, I saw a problem, I kicked off a change. Now we'll go see if we're gonna do it and move forward with a product that's gonna be better, much quicker. So the next step is the actual change action. And I really wanted to point out that what Katie did in the last step, Megan Manager here, is you kicked it off from draft to in work. And what she was doing was actually changing the maturity state of the change action. So like I said, everything has maturity. So the change action went from being in draft, just setting it up to now it's time to work. And it triggered the part creation to make me go do some work. And so now it's my job inside the change action to go decide if I'm doing the change action and to push it back to submit approval and to ask for uh, basically this to be done. So to, to make the fix, to make the change and to get our product back out and running. And so inside the platform here, I'm going to go ahead and I have nothing open. I was just having my coffee, having a wonderful morning. Uh, I got a <laughs> bunch of notifications, never a good sign. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check in my change actions. And uh-oh, high priority, drone arms too long. I don't believe it. This could never happen to me. Oh, actually it did. Okay. So I can see all this information. I could go in and check out her markup too if I really wanted to. Unfortunately, Katie's uh, sent me nasty messages and I, <laughs> I know what's wrong. I know what I did wrong. So I go check out the proposed change, proposed change here. Drone assembly default one, E1 needs to be revisioned to make that fix. All right. Just drag and drop this puppy over here. And there's a file right there. Wow. That's cool. And now I'm, I'm working on the file. Now, important things to note here. Um, when that change action was created, remember I released that one at E1, I released the drone at E1, but when Katie, or Megan Manager, went in and actually attached it to the change action and kicked off the revision, I now have a more recent version of this file available. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to just replace the revision I'm working on. I don't need E, I need to go fix F1. Oh wow, we're up, to F. <laughs> we're up to F already. It's a sad day for the home team. So I'm up to F. I noticed that the owner is set to Megan Manager. Based on our rule set, I usually like to own the data I'm working on. You don't always have to, but in my case, I wanna make sure that yes, this is my file. I, I'm taking responsibility for it, not only in the change action, but also in the system for reporting purposes. Because becoming immortal and uh, making those changes you know, I want to prove that I fixed my own problem. And so here we go. 
let's do that again here because I don't think I clicked. I keep not hitting the actual button. That's pretty embarrassing, to be honest. <laughs> so now that we've changed the ownership, oh no, go oh, change the ownership. No, oh, I want to take the ownership of it. It could just be that I've already done that. Let's see. You don't have to, right? You just like to do that. That's your. Um, I like to do it. I like. I like to have my signature on everything. You see. That's I, your. I, uh, it's part of your uh, protocol that you've set up. Yeah, it's part of my. Uh, you know, it's it's like the wet bandits flooding, flooding the uh, home alone houses. You see, I've got to. I've got to be like the wet bandits. Oh well. well that's a. That's a shame. But you can well, still work on it if you wanted yeah, to. Okay. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll stop being a baby and I'll uh, I'll go ahead and let me try one more time because I want this. I want it to be my day. There it is. See, <laughs> what was happening too is that uh, I wasn't working under the change action, so I wasn't documenting my change. So it was actually preventing me from doing that which is smart because wow. we wanted to not let me make a mistake. And I actively was trying to make a mistake. So that's embarrassing. It caught me. <laughs> All right. So in this case, uh, I'm going to take a look and say, uh, from cakes, when I move this around, uh, they're right. That they I probably thought that one through that. That was pretty obvious. So what do I need to fix? Well, I can just select the product and see, okay, propeller bra uh, bracket, chassis, let's go ahead and fix these things. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to save with options here. And I'm just going to kick off new revisions of the parts I need. So I need the top chassis. I need the propeller bracket to be getting their head in the game here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a revision of those parts. But what's Meaning cool that. is, you know, being like Megan manager in production, all the other parts of the drone can still continue to be produced or worked on. You know, it's just that one piece that we're fixing. So nothing's kind of holding it up. You know, you're not redoing all it. I like how it shows you just exactly what's getting worked on here. And Exactly. Because I don't I don't need to fix everything. I just need to fix right. the the length of this part. All right, so I'm gonna make this say 45 millimeters. Update that when I go back to my drone. And of course it's SolidWorks, so it everywhere updates, it's all linked correctly. I mean, we're still using the, the product we've been using for forever. Yeah, and I love that part. There we go. Now everything works super smoothly. I'm no longer embarrassed. I fixed my mistake. Let's go ahead and get this puppy saved to the cloud. We'll go ahead, save the assembly with the updates. It's going to keep it reserved here for me. So I do see that we have these up and running. And I am going to push them over to be frozen because we're going to go back through the approval process, right? So both the top level assembly, the sub assembly that needs to be edited, and my uh, bracket here that was too short, we're going to go to maturity. And this should seem pretty familiar because. It's the same idea of I'm done. I've well, yeah, done we the just work did I need that. to. We'll go ahead and freeze it. And that way we're updating the maturity state. Uh, and I can even then keep those reserved or release them. It doesn't really matter. But I'm done working under my change action. We'll go back over into the change actions themselves. And let's take a gander at my progress. And so this is the best part here. So I now have my realized changes, which includes in the assembly level of F1. You'll notice that I have full documentation on what I replaced the object with, which yep. revision I'm currently using, changing it to frozen. I have all the data. I have all the information that I need to be successful. And for people down the road to go back and say, hey, why did we what make that change? Let me check the reference document. Oh, I see that there are issues. What changed? Boom, we have all that info. Very cool. All right. And Very so cool. I'm also going to change the collaborative space this is in. 
because Katie, you made this in the wrong collaborative space. How dare you? How? <laughs> ah. Well, when you set this up originally, we kind of skipped over the fun section of all the settings, you see, and we could have just put it into my collaborative space. But alas, it doesn't matter because it's fixed. And we'll go ahead and uh, I want this to get approved. So we're kicking it off. We're saying, okay, we made all our changes. We put all the reps in, we put in the work. We have our new revision. Let's get this approved. This puppy is on its way up to the top. It's gonna get me a promotion down the road, I'm pretty sure. And you'll notice a couple things happen, which are pretty cool. First off, I have the approval again. Remember that I am marked as an approver on this list. So uh, I have the ability to approve and if you can assign me a task, I get it. I need to approve my own work. Lots of good redundancies to tell you when you need to do something, which is exactly what we want. And I'll go ahead and say, I, I approved it. Looks good from my side. And I've approved this, I'm good to go. I've done my work now. The rest of this relies back on Megan Manager to actually approve it and say, yes, this will fix our problem and we're back off to the races. So okay. the idea here is that we've managed to manage the maturity state of different data, the collaborative, uh, excuse me, the change action, not the collaborative space, but the change action and the part file itself. And by doing that, we've worked on the parts, we've made our changes, and we've set it back to be in approval without ever creating a traveler or a document or a physical change action or change order. And we're documenting every step of the process. So in three years, if someone needs to see exactly what, who did that change action, what date they approved it on, we have the info. Very cool. All right, let's finish this off. Let's go ahead and confirm how great of an adjustment I made inside of the arm here. And so what Katie's going to be doing as Megan manager is taking that collaborative uh, or wow, collaborative on the mind change action and shipping it over to be approved. So she's going to check it out. She's going to use some of the cloud tools to make sure that I did actually do the work. And then finally, she's going to release or approve the change action, which is automatically going to release the SolidWorks files. Hopefully right. she'll do that. Okay. Or, or she'll decline it and make me, make me sad and make me go back to work. But, uh, <laughs> I'll slip her a 20 and, and get approved anyways. Yeah. Okay, so real quick, you said I did it in the wrong collaborative space. Is everything okay here? Or? Yeah, everything's good here. So if you just hit okay. the refresh button where you are on there that change action, look, there you are. Hit the, uh, that'll work. Refresh. Look at that. Now it's an approval. Oh. <gasps> and you can see my, you can see the changes. You can see I changed the collaborative space to the change action collaborative space. You even get the pop up saying that I'm waiting on you to approve Steven. my glorious work. So I go back to data management area. Uh, so you're getting the change action area. You can actually go ahead Minimize and this. shrink that down a little bit. And while you would love to trust me, I've made a mistake once. So you probably want to compare the the two different versions, right? You want to make sure this I get my work. Is so cool. I love this part. Okay. So um do I just grab what do I grab to I gotta grab the file to put in here, right? Yeah. So you want to grab the file from the proposed changes, right? So um one to the Not left the of the paper clip. One to the left of the paper clip is the proposed changes. So those are are what we what we realized when we finish the change action, this these are the changes that are going to happen. And you want to go ahead and find that uh, this one here assembly here. Yep, perfect. Yep. Drag and drop because that. Because it doesn't have a little square around it. You told me that yesterday. Okay. And then look at this, guys. You're gonna you're gonna die when I show you this. Okay. Perfect. So now you get to choose which version you want to compare it with. So you're taking the Rev F, which is the one we're creating, and you want to compare it with Rev E, so the one that you know caused the problems right off the bat. So you can just select Rev E. Boom. And now we're going to get a side-by-side -side comparison of what's actually changed. And this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. We've used icebergs twice, so careful if you're in any steel ships. <laughs> but you can just, just see how flexible the online tools are to allow you to compare what's changed in the model. So here, how cool you have is that? Of what's moved, what's been revisioned. You can see the identical pieces. You can see 
the parts that aren't identical. So if you uncheck the yeah, identical, I can you can see what's actually been updated. Yes, look at that. How it's been changed, how it's shifted. You can do this at any level of the assembly. It is extremely flexible. And might I add, I have definitely fixed that issue with the drill. Yes, awesome I job. Awesome job. So do I go back to the data management tab to approve it or can you I want approve? To go ahead and, uh, you want to approve the change action. So you can just uh, minimize out the change act or the compare tool, right? So you don't need this tool okay. anymore. Let's go ahead and you want to give that change action the thumbs up on the, the drone arm there. So thumbs up. Looks I mean, you good can reject it, but you'd be making a mistake, you see. But if you do reject it, it would give me a notification saying that it was rejected. And from there, we could decide whether or not it needs to be permanently ended or to go back into that in work loop. But by Katie approving here, uh, you're approving the data again. So we've confirmed this is a great product. We're good on the maturity state. We're going to get notifications saying that everything is approved and good to go. And now if you go back to the data management tab, you'll notice that. Data management tab. Yep, uh -oh. and then if you uh, minimize out the markup here, because we're done, you already okay. told me what was wrong. But you'll notice <laughs> that we now have version E set to release inside of the bookmark. So we've gone ahead, we've released the drone specifications at Rev C. We went through an entire uh, part update. So we we tried to release the dove, we threw the dove, we got the dove thrown back in our face, and yet we prevailed. And, and look, revision F, boom. Exactly. So jumping back into the PowerPoint here, as we wrap things okay. up, we you got it. Okay. Uh, should now. You should probably be able to see. If you don't, well, I'm sorry, but uh, happens. Yeah, hey. I see your PowerPoint. So that's just what the compare tool, the one we showed you that has the overlapping models. That's just one of the many Anovia-based tools that you can use in order to check data and to determine whether or not you pass or fail an approval. But by approving the change action, Megan Manager actually kicked off the release of that file. Everything's in the clear, and you can automatically transition those maturity states. That's awesome. I All love right. it. So what Ooh. we basically went through <laughs> is the entire design process, really focusing in on how for managing change, how you can get permission to change, and what it looks like to use Anovia. Now, we want to make sure we left some time for your questions, and I see we have a couple in chat here. Yeah, so yeah, I was just looking at terms, In terms of the platform, you know, solid experience, we're 3D experts, we're really here to help, we have a ton of different people, and so let's, let's see, Katie, you want to read the first one? Yeah, 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 there was just a question about maturity. Um, it says, uh, is there a way to have different maturity states if I want? And is that, I mean, I, I'm trying to understand why that, Yeah. like so if you wanted to call something else other problem. than frozen or. You know what, it's it's targeting the idea that each type of product or each type of file uh, it has a different path it goes through. So for example, you don't necessarily need to have a bookmark have five different states, but you might want that on your part file. So each object, you can do maturity for any object and they each have their own maturity workflow or maturity process. So you have even more flexibility than you know, your typical workflows. Um, and I see here the other question is, how does that replace the workflows inside of SolidWorks PDM? So SolidWorks PDM is very, very good in terms of working with a, within a Windows environment. So you have your basic limitations based on Windows. So you're stuck you know, using separate names, you are using file folders for a lot of things, and you really, get around the limitations of Windows using workflows. But inside of the cloud, inside of Anovia, we have even more tools. So you can manipulate the workflow to change who goes as part of your approving process. Uh, you can set up templates for routes so that when you go to an approval, it immediately notifies one, two, five people who need to you know, be added as approvers. So we all we did all that part manually, but you can set up whatever step-by-step -step approval process that you physically have, or you can keep it super simple. So the benefit here is that you don't have the, the complicated hydro workflows inside of the PLM software. Instead, you really have a very streamlined and efficient way of taking your data, 
working on your data and then publishing your data. So going through the entire data management cycle very easily and very smoothly without muddying the water, so to say. So if somebody does already have like a PDM Pro set up, could they, would this, could they use the 3D Experience platform? Um, so currently it depends. Or would they there, get rid of, yeah. Well, we're currently developing a, a migration tool to go from PDM into the platform if people wanted to. Now that's not gonna replace PDM. PDM is always gonna be there in an amazing on-premise solution. But yes. for people who wanna be more cloud-based and wanna be more agile, and also have access to all these tools that we have on the cloud, that's definitely going to be, you know, one of the solutions we're looking at down the road. You know, this, this is, you know, this is the development of the future is cloud, cloud software and cloud tools working alongside of your SolidWorks that you know and love. All right, and then there's just one last question about um, mm -hmm. keeping things kind of on the simple side, not so complex. Um, I, I don't know if they're referring to, um, you know, the change action and I guess you don't it, you don't have to do everything right out of the gate right you can keep it super simple right. oh yeah so so what we're showing is a way to really manage change but a lot of companies actually don't don't need that level of oversight you can still manually release files you can uh, have to different levels of complexity depending on what fits your company needs so what we showed is probably on the more complex side just in terms of needing approval needing complete history but if you want something but very super, cool, but very cool and, and very important for a lot of our customers and, and even yep. for myself to be able to track those changes, but it depends on what you need. So mm -hmm. sometimes you just want something super simple and streamlined where you're checking files in and you're getting files back. And the platform also does that, you know, just because we have lots of awesome tools and, you know, the, the power of all the different brands at your fingertips doesn't mean you actually have to use them. You, you only use the tools you need and that work with your work. I love it. I love it. And did we at the beginning say why? Because people are seeing, I'm getting messages. What is Solid Experience Group? Do we already talk about that at the beginning? Or should well, we talk about it now? Let's go ahead and talk about it now. Katie, well, what, yeah. what is the Solid Experience Group? If, you, I love if you've it. been well, asleep for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, really. <laughs> yeah, we actually uh, uh, merged with our parent company, Mechanica, who has uh, been a Katia reseller for what, 20? plus 30 years yeah I think it's 38 it's a long time very long time so it's really cool especially now with the 3d experience platform because that whole side of the house has had so much experience with the platform already the the on-premise version so mm -hmm. we have got I mean you name it uh, all the expertise it with with each of these uh, with the Enovia with the Delmia um, already and so now it's just in the cloud so um so we rebranded ourselves the solid experience group uh but obviously solid experts is one side of the house mechanica solutions is the other um so uh, hopefully that doesn't confuse too many people it just means no. you've got so much more <laughs> so much more to so much more Jeez. to do so much more to learn so definitely yeah. go check out the the go to stage channel it has a bunch of webinars i think there's even more now uh, on on the platform on this update to the software and you know if you if you are paying attention to it you're going to be behind so check it out check out the link the links in chat as well thank you everyone and i mean thank you guys everybody. Stephen. that was fun being megan manager i appreciate it i'm <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you uh you were able to be my boss for a little bit you weren't too let's hard on do me it though. again let's do another one that was fun <laughs> excellent excellent all right thanks everyone right. and uh have a great afternoon. Thank you, everybody.